Okay, so we're back for part two. So I've given my life to Christ now. And what's kind of happened was, okay, I felt this supernatural revelation of Christ um, and the, fa the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, it was surreal. It, it gave. It brought me so much joy. I started reading my Bible. Like the zealousness. You know when you just start, the zealousness is always up there. But then, I started experiencing just weird things. Um, and obviously these weird things, I now know are spiritual warfare. Um, I started getting nightmares, like a s just surreal rounds of nightmares. And I was thinking in my head, what is going on? Um, and I was, I guess, sometimes I would look at like pornographic scenes on TV from on Netflix or like, um, horror movies or, and it, I didn't know, I didn't really know like that open up portals to demons. So I was kind of like saved, but I wasn't, I was in that period where, you know, um, there's a Bible verse. Wait, hold on. Okay, I don't have my phone with me. Um, but you know, when you give your life to Christ, you that you, you have the right to become a child of God, but you're not really a child of God yet. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, I wasn't a proper child of God yet. So I was kind of like a baby Christian, and I went through these spirits of deception and these spirits of like, um. I would guess deceptions. There's just different spirits that would deceive me in different ways. Um, I did get deceived about a lot of things, which affected me and affected the people that I was around at the time. So yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, I guess um, I had visions that are obviously false about like my future. And this was just random. Like, I didn't ask for it. Do you understand? Like, I was like, okay, cool. God, I'm praying for X, Y, Z. I'm praying for X, Y, Z. Um, I'm praying for this. I'm praying for that. I'm praying for this. And then I'll just get a vision about X, Y, Z. Do you understand? Okay, this is what I'm going to be doing in the future. This is who my spouse will be. This is blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, do you know what? It's sick. Like, I've gotten given the rundown. Now I'm just going to... I'm just going to, I'm literally just going to pursue that, isn't it? Because it, it's obviously is from God and it really wasn't from God, you know. One thing that I've learned is that you need to have enough faith in God to trust him even when you don't know what he's going to do. If someone gives you a plan of what they're going to do, you're not really trusting in them. You're trusting in the plan. Do you understand? And I didn't realise that when I was young in the faith, so... I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to trust in these visions and I'm going to pursue these visions. Um, yeah, and um, I need to say, it messed up a lot of things in my life. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, I think it was um, sovereign because... Um, I guess it was sovereign because I kind of had... Some visions came to pass, like some visions I would have and it would be like, okay, this is going to happen. And it just happened without me even trying to pursue it or whatever. And that's one thing. If you ever get a vision from God, just know that it will happen without your intervention or without you focusing on the vision alone. Do you understand? If God gives you a vision about a house, a house or moving out or driving or anything, it's not, it will happen naturally. It will happen. You will not have to do anything. I'm telling you, you, you will just have to be obedient to Christ and that's it. And sometimes it just happens. Like, so anyways, I, I had these false visions. Um, yeah, messed up the people around me. I don't want to go into it too much. Um, but if you, if you have any questions, um, you can always ask me. We can speak about it in private, but um, yeah. It messed up a lot of things, um, and I kind of questioned, like, why Why did I get deceived in those things? Um, and I started to kind of question God, and I was like, God, like, I gave my life to you, I trusted in you, and you did these things to me. Why? Like, you knew I wouldn't be able to handle it. 
like a, a month in, two months into my faith, and I'm being deceived already. Like, I want. Where's that feeling that I had when I first received you? Do you understand? Why is it now that I'm experiencing deception and I'm having to fight all of these demons? And honestly, it took me a while to recover from that. Um, and I guess God kind of exposed all the things that I've been hurt from since childhood as well. So that kind of stacked on top of the of the um, other issues that I had at the time. Um, so yeah, no, I lost a lot of lost uh, supernaturally i believe i lost a lot of people around me because i stopped um i i wanted to i uh, had a season where i just didn't want to drink i didn't want to do anything i didn't want to engage in any sexual means or acts i didn't want to flirt with any woman like my i did a 180 pretty much in it and i wasn't trying to um engage in anything of the flesh um, and yeah, that kind of took a lot of people out, I guess. Um, I guess it was my own actions as well. Like, um, I felt as if with discernment, God was like, okay, son, I need to move you to certain places and you can't take these people with you. And I look back at it now and I completely understand. Um, obviously it hurt me, it hurt the people around me. Um, and again, I have the spur just came in i had really i wasn't really good at like put um you know when you when you have a friend and you're like you're trying to put a distance between you and them and you're like okay cool it's not how it used to be anymore yeah i was very terrible at doing that and i would offend people i'll be like okay do you know what i, I don't want to be boys with you anymore when re in reality it's like okay no i just want to put um it's not adapting anymore. We don't walk the same path anymore. I'm with Christ. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to be tempted, blah, blah, blah. Um, I can't be friends with the world anymore. I can only be friends. I can only have a friendship with God. So it's kind of like, okay. Yeah, and I need to say I messed up a lot of things. Um, so that happens. Um, whilst that happens, um, a lot of things that happen out of my control. I lose my house. I lose... I, I lost my um I, I lost possession to my yard well i decided to leave um my yard the yard that i had um i dropped out of uni due to personal circumstances i uh, had covid i was suffering with depression after what happened i just couldn't hack anything um and to be honest with you um i've just taken i've taken out a year um i was working i was just working part-time how many hours was I working? Seven, 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 eight, seven. I was working at like 30 hours. Well, why am I? I'm probably struggling to remember how many hours. I was working 30 hours. Um, so I started so to live with my parents again. Um, yeah, and then I became a deacon. Now, don't ask why, because even me, I, I'm thinking about it like, Bro, I'm not mature. I'm not spiritually mature enough to become a deacon. But um, I was working. I went to one of my old churches that I used to go to when I was younger. Um, it's a good church, by the way, but um, just not for me at the moment. Um, I went there, became a deacon. Um, it was it was it was it was a good experience at first. Like I was praying more. Um, my discernment with Christ was growing my my spiritual discipline was growing but then it kind of I kind of started to see things that I didn't really want to see and I'm not going to get into that because um, biblically it tells me not to expose any any sin or anything that happened or anything that I saw so I'm not really going to get into that but I was kind of shocked because I had this perception that Christianity it's full of like people that are patient, especially the ones that have been Christians for a long time. That people pe people are like patient, they're kind, you know, they're willing to welcome you with open arms. They're there to help you if you need. Obviously, not all the time because that's toxic in it. But when they're free or when they have time. But um, yeah, no, I've, I found out that Christianity is 
it's very similar to the world and a lot of people won't tell you this um christianity and the world aren't that much different like in Christ in 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 the in Christianity, there are various different denominations. There are different beliefs. There are different um, approaches. People act differently. People believe in different um, approaches, not just to like the Bible, but to like how to live life as a Christian in general. Um, and I kind of saw that, and I got so much grief in my heart. I don't know if it was from God or if it was from me, but like people weren't really aligning with the Bible at all. And there's one Bible verse that says, um, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try find it now. Um, let's hope. <laughs> let's hope I can find it. Um I'll, I always use my phone so I wouldn't know. Uh, um, okay, I don't know what the Bible verse is. I really need to stop using the Bible on my phone because I don't remember what the book is, what the chapter is and what the verse is. But it says I it said it goes it goes like this. But be doers of the word, not hearers only. Um a man who hears the word and doesn't act on it is like a man who looks in the mirror a mirror, walks off and and immediately forgets who he is. There are a lot of Christians like that. And and there are Christians that go to go to church on a Sunday. They listen to the word. They get motivated. They post a few Bible quotes. Um, they got a Bible verse in their bio. No draw outs in it. They got a Bible verse in their bio. Blah blah blah. They're posting all these quotes. But when you chat to them, and when you get to know them, it's like they're a completely different person to 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 what they're saying. And I was so like. I was like, what is going on? Like, why am I here serving with, and not just serving like in general, but like just, why am I in fellowship with other Christians that act, that are not aligning with scripture? And it kind of hurt me a lot. And it's like, I'm a, I, choose, I choose to be a Christian because I want to be transformed and there are Christians out there that are doing the same thing they did f when from when they were saved or when they were atheists. Do you understand? And it kind of hurt me. Like, and bear in mind, I was already still healing from all the other things that um, I stated earlier in this video when I was in uni. So I just took time out to really fast with Christ. Um and not really fast but just distance myself from everyone like literally everyone and just read the bible um and kind of taking what i'm supposed to take in um in a spiritual with a spiritual eye as well um because if you don't have the guidance of the holy spirit whilst reading the bible you could interpret something wrong um and yeah um that's when i started to kind of spend time um i guess my faith in God hindered a little bit. Um, I fell back into sexual sin. And to be very honest with you, I have literally just come out of it. Like, I think maybe last week. Yeah, literally last week. Um, and literally because I have been fighting, not re resisting these demons every time, like telling me in my head, you know what? Look at all the Christians in the world. Look, some of them, they preach one thing, they do another. Why don't you do the same? Why don't you just enjoy your sin? Why don't you just stay comfortable? Why don't you just hide it from the world? If no one sees you, it's fine. Just enjoy it on your own. You can still do, you can do what they do, it's fine. And honestly, that messed with me a lot. Like, um, and if you could tell, I would always post Bible verses and talk about God and then take a take time out. Whenever I was taking time out, that's because I was I was in repetitive sin. Um, I was stuck in bondage to sin, and I was like, you know what? If I'm in sin, I'm not preaching no gospel because that makes me false. That makes me a wolf in sheep's clothing. I can't be preaching about pursuing righteousness 
when I'm pursuing lawlessness. It doesn't make any sense, even though other people w were clearly doing the same thing. So, obviously, I decided um, to take time out fast socially um, and just be a normal person, read the Bible. That's what I did. Um, I read the Bible. Um, I learned about who, who Christ is, who God is. Obviously, Jesus and God are the same. If you um, obviously, if you don't know that, then you can you can ask me, and I'll I'll, I'll tell you why. But yeah, Jesus and God were the same. Um, learned about what Jesus fully went through. Like, you know, sometimes people say Jesus Christ died for your sins, but people don't really understand why Jesus Christ died for your sins or how painful that that experience that Jesus had was. So like, I really took time to understand who Jesus was from, from birth to like death and then resurrection and then the ideas and the plans for his second coming, second coming. So that's what I did. I learned more about that. Um, I started reading, reading Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Um, I read Ecclesiastes because um, I had a desire for riches. I had a desire for riches, for a beautiful woman, beautiful house, beautiful car. So I was like, do you know what? I still have desires for that now. Um, and to be honest, yeah, that's the kind of, that's the reason I'm making this channel in the first place. Cause I kind of want to, um, this is a, this is like self-improvement, not really self-improvement, but, uh, improvement in life and taking care of yourself, but for Christians, do you understand? I would say, obviously the world, I'm not saying the world is bad and I'm not saying blah, 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 but some of the stuff that these guys are saying, like, it just triggers me. So like, I just decided, you know, I might as well help people. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be doing more of that. And I've been praying to God for that for a long time. Um, I've been reading the Bible as much as I can, especially like, um, especially Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Guys. Let me just let me just pause this whole story time and just tell you something, yeah. You do not need any self help book books. You don't need to read any listen, let me tell you something, yeah. I'm just telling you now. If you're into like psychology and you want to understand how the brain works and how the body works and whatever, I am not disagreeing with that, yeah. You can do that. And I think that's that's a benefit. But all these self help books, like Gary V or Gary V is a great guy. I'm not gonna lie, Gary V or like whoever, or like self improvement or like Red Pill, Kevin Samuels, Fresh and Fit, all of them brothers, bro. Please, I'm warning you. Just read Proverbs and read Ecclesiastes. Read them two books. You won't need any, any of them. And I, I'm I'm not capping. This ain't cap. I'm I'm being very very real. Like I was someone that was heavy into red pill. I was someone that was heavy into like um, roommates podcast, Jordan Peterson's idea of like becoming a monster. Um, I was heavy into like, what's his name? Steph is cold. Steph is cold. Um, Kevin Samuels. I was heavy into Kevin Samuels. I was heavy into like hypergamy, um, focusing on yourself as a man, becoming a high value man, all of those stuff. Let me just tell you now, Read Proverbs, like, bro, if there's nothing, if there's one thing I can encourage people to do yet, yeah, bro, atheist, Christian, Muslim, whatever, oh, just read the Bible, read Proverbs, and read Ecclesiastes, I'm telling you, you will figure life out, you will figure it out, bro, literally, the answers to how life works are in Proverbs and in Ecclesiastes, Proverbs is the book of, like, wisdom, do you understand? And Ecclesiastes is the book of, I would say, experience. And um, it's kind of dark in the sense that Ecclesiastes will, it states on how everything is meaningless and you're kind of like, there's a season for everything um, and things, and no matter how much you achieve, you will always be empty. But if you understand the concept, if like I always say pray for guidance, please. Pray to God for like guidance and wisdom in um, when reading the Proverbs, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. But guys, I'm telling you, man, um, I have 
I guess this is the end. <laughs> this is this is the end. Um, but yeah, Ecclesiastes has really helped me detach my life from like materialistic things, women, models, red pill, green pill, blue pill, sigma male, alpha male, beta male, like all all of that. Um, Proverbs as well has helped me kind of understand what I should do and what I shouldn't do in life. Um, and I believe I've changed a lot. Um, and I'm still growing. Like this isn't this isn't me, this is God, and this is a journey that's eternal. It's not okay, cool. Like a lot of these testimonies are like, do you know what? Cool, I found Christ and I'm good. No, no, no. This testimony for me is I found Christ. I've seen the reality of how life is, both in Christianity and um, outside of Christianity. And this is my journey now with Christ. And I want to share it with all of you. Obviously, I'm going to share what I can share. And I'm not going to share the stuff that I can't share. But this is for the people. And um, yeah, I want to say um, a lot. I want to say glory to God. I've healed from a lot of things. Um, I've even, I even met a person that, had a problem with the other day um met him i didn't really it was calm i saw him didn't really have a problem with him i don't know i don't know i don't know i blessed it with him i said i don't have an issue with him usually bro i would never do that mom's life i'll never do that if you knew me if you knew me when i was in mom's life i'll never do that but i did that big man thing um bro literally cut off all like all forms of like rivalries grudges with everyone the people that have done me wrong i don't have a problem with anyone like and that that is the best thing that god's done in my life um people do me wrong i don't really trust in man anymore that's amazing i trust in god um i don't even trust i literally trust no one and people are saying no oh, that's it's antisocial like bear toxic you have to trust of course you have to trust people but in a spiritual sense bro humans make mistakes and a human will always fall short sometimes it's out of their control and sometimes it's in their control sometimes it's like do you know what i can't be asked i'm not going to do this and then they let the other person down and sometimes it's like okay cool something's happened that is outside of their control and they've let someone down in that sense i will never trust someone because People always let you down, but God will never let you down. You feel me? If you you ever need something, God is there. You understand? You see, whenever I need to go to work um, and, and I don't have money on my Oyster, God will always work something out. Um, I'm late. Cool. God will work something out. I'll get there on time. Uh, okay. Let's say um, I don't have clothes or I can't wash whatever. God will work something out. He will, God works through the external. Do you understand? God works through the unseen. It's not supernatural. It's not that he gives it to you on a plate. God is the reality that works outside of our control. Does that make sense? God and Satan, obviously. Not just God, but we'll get to the Satan bit further down the line. Um, and yeah, I just want to encourage people. Find out who Christ is. Um, read Proverbs. Read Ecclesiastes. Um, and yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make another video on like why you should read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, um, and I'm gonna go into various kind of different topics. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. But yeah, and I hope you enjoyed um, the testimony. That's the full testimony of who I am, um, how I grew up, how I came to Christ, etc., and where I'm at now in my journey. But yeah, have a great day. Listen, every man. Every man that sees this video, you get me. Look at this. Look at me in the eyes. You man are my people. You get me. Even if it's two or three for now, but listen, army. You get me. Spiritual swords come like samurais. You get me. The word of God. The sword. My name. In a bit, cuz.